This video will show you the uh, software tour of our latest products, Otosim Mobile. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, get to our uh, web-based, cloud-based application uh, through using your browser. So in this particular s situation, we are using a um, Samsung 10e uh, a phone and we're going to use uh, Chrome as our uh, as our browser. So on this particular screen you'll see that we will either log into the Otosim mobile platform or the Optisim login platform. So in this particular situation we're going to log into the Otosim platform. But before we do that we are going to create a um, home page icon for this particular site. Okay, that will create uh, the logon screen and where you will be you would would have been given your username and password uh, for a personalized login. But before we do that, we're going to create a, a home screen uh, a home page icon in order to eliminate the navigation uh, uh, bar at the top. You would uh, create a home page icon either on an Android or a iPhone or a platform. Uh, in this case, this is an Android platform, so we will uh, bring down our drop-down list to add this particular site to the home screen. And this will be called the Otosim Mobile, uh, Otosim M, and we'll add it. Add it to the home screen. And it says the shortcut has been added. We'll close this down. And now we will launch the program from the shortcut on the desktop, the Otosim Mobile. And as you notice now, the navigation bars have, have, uh, have been removed uh, and the application appears on the full screen view. We will now put in our username and password. In this particular scenario, uh, we've given our username as student and our password. Yours will be unique to yourself. We'll save this password. And this will bring it to this screen. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up the phone, uh, the, the resolution of your phone to match the, the, uh, the program that we are uh, uh, accessing via the cloud. So we go to our settings and we select our phone, in this case the Samsung Galaxy S10e. We select that and you'll see what's happened now is we have a blue footprint that shows up on the top of the screen. If for some reason you do not, uh, are not able to match that, that resolution, uh, that footprint, then record the, the um, uh, numbers that are on the bottom left of the screen. You see in this case there's three colon 1080 colon 2280. Uh, that's the, uh, the resolution of your screen. And you would email those to us and we'll make sure that your phone uh, is set up uh, in our database for proper uh, magnification and viewing. But in this case it looks quite accurate so now we can proceed to the program itself. Um, we will come back to the settings page to introduce you to some of these different uh, functionalities um, uh, at, at, at a later time in the, in the video. So now we're going to press our home button. We go back to our welcome screen. Now it's full screen and we can remove this so we don't have to show it again. Click done and then this is the main screen of the program. So the program has been designed so then if you worked, uh, work your way through it from the beginning to the end then uh, you will become a very proficient uh, uh, user of, of uh, the otoscope and the, the ability to diagnose correctly uh, pr uh, conditions that af uh, affect the human ear. So we're going to go through these at one step at a time and we'll give you some of the features uh, that are available on this uh, software package. But if we start off with the introduction, so in the introduction section you will see that we just have two sections, the history of otoscopy and some otosim studies. Uh, you can view those at your leisure. Uh, you use the scroll uh, button uh, the same way you would with any other phone in order to view all the content in the window below. Uh, and you would press the, the next button to view the next uh, uh, page available and a previous page uh, in the bottom right of your screen. 
The back button on the bottom allows you to go back to the, to the menu where you just were, and it highlights where you were as well. You see the history of otoscopy uh, is highlighted. So we'll, we'll go back to the uh, uh, main menu, and we'll go through pre-SIM learning, so the first sections are designed just to review some of the uh, basics about ot otoscopy uh, and how to uh, uh, maximize the use of the otoscope pri and review some of the anatomy uh, before we actually get into the simulation part of the training. So the first part is holding the ear, shows you how to hold the ear by pulling the ear upwards and back on the adult and straight back and a bit down on the on the uh, pediatric patient in order to straighten the ear canal for proper viewing. When you're finished a certain section, I can press the finish section and it goes back to the, that uh, sub-menu. So we'll go into the holding the otoscope, techniques to hold the otoscope. The, the next icon is extremely important. It's how to use the target touchpad in order for the verifiable learning. So in this particular situation, uh, we're going to use the, the tar target touchpad, the capacitance part of your screen, in order to, to uh, familiarize yourself with the targeting mechanism, which will be used throughout the entire program. So if I scroll down on this page, you'll see there's four different uh, uh, tests that are available, and it marks your, it records your best uh, score with each of those uh, skill levels. So if we click on the first skill level, so this now brings up this screen, which shows you a picture of a normal ear with a, uh, a crosshairs with a, uh, a dotted uh, red uh, uh, line, and using your fingers on the bottom blue screen, you would actually move the, the, the targeting mechanism to within the circle, the target, and then gently tap on the screen, and that engages the program and the timer. Uh, and gives you your next target to follow. So this just gives you an idea of how this particular uh, targeting mechanism works, which you be have to become quite familiar with in order to use throughout, throughout the rest of the program. Once you've completed all the targets, the time uh, stops. You record it on the bottom blue screen, and you can retake the test as many times as you want. So you can increase your, your skill levels uh, and the complexity of each of those tests, uh, we're not going to do it here for time purposes. So once you become familiar with the use of that uh, targeting uh, touchpad, uh, then we'll go into some review of anatomy. And for this particular section, we're going to review some of the coronal anatomy and introduce the targeting mechanism button. So. As mentioned, there's a descriptor on all slides, which you can scroll through and read. And then in this particular section, when you see the highlighted targeting mechanism in the upper uh, navigation bar, if I select it, you will see uh, uh, nav uh, the navigation uh, tools that are necessary to use the targeting. So you would choose the annotation by, t uh, by tapping on choose an annotation, and a drop-down list will appear of the uh, structures that we want you to review in this particular uh, uh, slide. So, for example, we'll choose the pinna. Find the pinna. And you can see that there is a, uh, you would hear that there was a, a female voice uh, which asked you to, d to identify the pinna. Uh, you, can, you can select the male or female voice in the settings, which we'll talk about later as well. Uh, now the targeting mechanism appears, and I would move that to where the pinna is, and click or uh, uh, tap on the blue screen. Brilliant. And it verifies the fact that you've hit that anatomy. External auditory canal. And then it automatically goes to the next one. That's also in the settings, uh, to the next uh, uh, target for you to identify. In this case, the external auditory canal. That's it. Find the. Cartilaginous external auditory canal. Spot on. Find the bony external auditory canal. Right. And cetera. So you can go through all the different uh, anatomical structures. And if I want to uh, magnify the top screen, 
I could actually use the pinch technique on the upper portion, portion of the screen to enlarge the image on the upper part of the screen. So when I'm dealing with the smaller structures of the inner ear, I can magnify, and if I select, for example, uh, stapes, stapes. Find the stapes or stirrup. So now you can see that the image is bigger and I can, uh, in an easier fashion, find it and identify it. Okay, so uh, that uh, is, for, is particular for that section, uh, a review of the coronal anatomy and introduce you to those two icon, that new icon, the targeting mechanism. Now we review a little bit of the ear anatomy, a canal view. So in this particular view, now you get a view of the eardrum as it would be seen on otoscopy, and I can magnify that image uh, by using the pinch technique in the upper slide. Remember, this is not for simulation purposes now. This is for pre-sim learning. So I can, in this particular series, there are three pictures, one of the eardrum, and then the next one is of the, the eardrum having been removed, showing what you would see if your eardrum was removed to look at the middle ear structures in, a, in an artist's uh, uh, rendition of it. And then the third one is showing you the relative anatomy of the surrounding structures of the temporal bone uh, in a translucent way to show you the relationships between those structures and where the eardrum actually was. And each of those particular slides has a uh, annotation associated with it that I can select all these structures uh, in order to identify the particular anatomy. In this case, it's asking me for the stapedius tendon. Okay, so I hit the anatomy. Identify the and it goes on to the next one as well. Now, as I mentioned, I could shut off the automatic motion, uh, forward motion, uh, through the settings button. Okay, so that completes the, uh, the pre-SIM learning section. So if I go back, now I'm into the, the introduction of the simulator. And this first video shows you how to attach your hardware to the phone. So a very quick video showing you the, the, uh, the mechanism that is used. Uh, and then the application on the second video of the footprint fitting the footprint on the actual phone. Okay, now then we explain an, the, another icon that you'll appear, the app and simulation mode uh, icon. So if we do this one, you'll now see that the expansion con and uh, contraction uh, icon appears in the upper part of the, of the screen. And if you're do, using, using simula the simulator and that actual screen comes up, that tells the user that there is no image associated with that particular uh, uh, slide. So if you want to see what is uh, uh, underneath there, you would press the other icon, the image button on the top right on the navigation button, and you'll, that image that's appearing within the screen will appear in the lower screen uh, in a in a large magnified fashion where I can use my pinch technique as well to make it bigger or smaller. Okay, and if I use the app button, you'll now see in the na one of the buttons down on the lower uh, navigation bar, you will see the app button. That app button now turns the entire upper screen into a square image, a large image, to allow you to see an image uh, in, a, in, a, in a larger fashion and scroll through the words associated with that image. Uh, this will allow you to use your your phone application if you don't want to use the the attachment uh, simulated device simulation device uh, for simulation purposes. Remember, this is a simulator. We've created it so you can practice your otoscopic techniques using the attachment that that you purchased with your product. So we'd encourage you to use it in the uh, non-app mode in the simulation mode so you can practice your otoscopic techniques. Now, we're in the simulation introduction section back again, and now we check your, your vision 
uh, to make sure that you have the skills that are needed, your visual skills, to actually use the, the simulator. So the first part of the visual perception test, where you'll see uh, six different categories that we check uh, to be sure that you have the skills uh, to be able to use uh, the simulator. The first one and most important is obviously acuity. And if you press the acuity and have your simulating device on with the footprint covered and you use your otoscope to view the, the screen, you should be able to read down to the fifth or sixth line. If you're unable to do that, then we suggest that you see an ophthalmologist or an optometrist to have your vision uh, corrected um, because you will have difficulty using uh, doing otoscopy if your visual acuity is not uh, up, to, up to par. So if we go use the back button, now you'll see what happens. Once, if you navigate back and you've completed a section, uh, it turns red to show you that you've completed that section. And there's also a counter, a numerator and a denominator. In this case, there's one slide that you looked at and, and there was only one slide in the collection, so you've completed that section. Uh, as you get into the pathology in later sections, these are quite, they're quite large sections, so you want to uh, be able to navigate quickly back uh, to where you were uh, left off, and, and the program will automatically take you to that last slide. Um, so we're not going to go through each of these sections, uh, and we'll just carry on to the next section. So go from visual perception test, now you must use, be able to use the, the target touchpad with your simulator attached to your phone. So in this particular one, there are, again, the same skill uh, test that you had on the pre-app or pre-sim teaching, but now you're, you're going to use it with your simulator attached. So you now click on that, and you would now have your simulator on and using your otoscope. You would now be uh, using your otoscope to look down at the image and then use your capacitance uh, touchscreen, your targeting mechanism, as before, to, you, to move it to the target, and you tap, and it'll take it to the next target, et cetera, and then you work through uh, each of these different uh, targeting mechanisms. The next one is normal anatomy. So now we can review normal anatomy with our simulator or in the app mode, whatever we prefer. But if we go to normal landmarks, for example, and you attach your device, you will now see that there is a, an image of a normal ear and with the three icons present, both the, uh, the reading section, uh, which I can scroll up and down as mentioned, the targeting mechanism, and the expansion uh, and, and, and produ producing the image in the lower screen with our simulator attached. It describes your, your surface anatomy or your uh, eardrum anatomy, and then I can target uh, by pressing annotation button a certain structure, whether it be the short Locate or lateral process of, the malleus. process of the malleus. And if I navigate correctly on there, watch what happens. If I bring it up to the short process of the malleus. Exactly. It gives me a verifiable that I've hit the right target. It will now peel the eardrum away and give me the middle ear anatomy and the surrounding anatomy uh, all in one view without having to remove the device. And then it goes on to the next one. If I'm unclear of what's on the top, what they're asking me to, uh, uh, to look at, in this case it's asking me to, to point to the vascular strip, then I could uh, use the right button on the top in order to show what's, what's down below, and I can expand it, then I can, I can target it again, the vascular strip, or... Identify the vascular strip. Okay, and if I don't know where the vascular strip is, I have a hint button. If you look at the lower navigation bar, there's actually a hint button. So if I press the hint button, you'll see internally that uh, on the top screen that it's showing me where that target is. If I press the hint again a second time, it shows me the, the screen the below, down below with where that target is. So now I can still use my navigation uh, targeting uh, mechanism to go within that uh, mark and click on it, and now I'm correct. Once you've mastered the normal exam, then we go into the pathology section, which identifies many different conditions of the ear and into three different categories, the external auditory canal, the uh, middle ear, and then 
a specialist uh, section as well, which deals with retraction pockets. Because the section is so large, we put a search uh, a, a, a search engine on the top to be for you to be able to go to to that category. This is a, a very crude search, only searching for the 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 top condition uh, that you are actually trying to search. I, if I uh, go to a particular section for this example, tympanocentesis, uh, it shows you gives uh, shows you a picture of a of a, of an eardrum with a, a tympanocentesis performed on it with some descriptors and then different types of uh, tubes. And at any time, if I want to bookmark one of these to come back to it later, I can turn the bookmark on and I can come back and view that at a later time. And I can go through a segment and then I can exit. And if I exit, you see what it does? It takes me back to the spot where I was because this is quite a big section. So it'll take me back to that section uh, to allow me to carry on. So we're not going to, again, go through that, but now you see that there is a highlighted, I put a bookmark beside it, and if I want to view those bookmarks later, I can press the home button and go down to the bookmarks, and that shows me where that bookmark was. We've also put in a pneumatic otoscopy section uh, to simulate pneumatic otoscopy, even though you're not using a, uh, a bulb to, uh, to insufflate the ear. We do have a virtual pneumatic oto otoscopy uh, uh, program that's been added to this mobile platform. So if you engage the pneumatic otoscopy, there is, we call it pneumatosim. So there's two sections here. We have pneumatosim as well as just a straight video section. So if you want to just look at the videos for a normal ear, for example, this gives you what a normal ear looks like. If I press the play button, it shows me a video of a normal ear with pneumatic otoscopy with movement of the eardrum. And I can, if I want to make it, that's using the actual simulator itself, uh, attachment, and looking at it with the otoscope. But if I want to see it in bigger format, I could use the app mode, and that'll show you the video of it moving the eardrum. I can pause or play, and let's go back to the sim mode. And let's go back to that section. It shows me that video that I just viewed. Now, if I want to do a virtual pneumatic otoscopy, I can go back to the pneumatosim section and look at that same ear. In this case, we now have a virtual pneumatoscope, uh, uh, pneumatic otoscopy uh, uh, addition where I can press the top icon. That brings up a simulated bulb which with a two-finger pinch technique, I can squeeze the bulb, pretend I'm squeezing the bulb, and you can see that the eardrum moves in and out based on the pressure that I'm exerting by squeezing the bulb. Or alternatively, I can use the slider button to do the same on the lower part, to use the slider button uh, to generate those pressures. You notice that while I'm looking inside the scope, I would also see the pressure, both positive and negative, that I'm generating if I'm getting out of range, it turns red. If I'm getting out of range in the negative, it turns red as well. So I want to stay within the green, practicing my pneumatic otoscopy techniques. And if I want to turn that graph off, because right now there's a, it's showing me on the inside, but if I want to turn the graph off, there is a button on the, on the bottom uh, uh, towards the right where it says graph. I can disengage that, turn it off, so now that that uh, that uh, graph is no longer seen inside the the uh, the image uh, that I'm using my my otoscope to view. Okay, and I can make that bigger as well in the app mode. I can do the same thing with a bigger image or the pinch technique. Okay, so let's go back to the main menu. Presentations. Presentations in this section, if your instructor using the portal has created a presentation for you, then it would appear in this section. If there are quizzes that have been created by your instructor, they would appear in the defined quizzes section. In this particular situation, there are no defined quizzes, but there are plenty of random 
diagnostic and random anatomical quizzes that have been put into the program for individual use. So if we engage, say, the standard quiz, if I want to see the question, I would uh, press the question button. It gives you the, the question. And then you, to select your answer, you would, you would select an answer and submit. Remember, this is a quiz. It's not being marked. It's not being seen by your instructor. And it allows you to make multiple choices and find the correct answer. So if I thought this was chronic otitis media, for example, I would select chronic otitis media, submit, and it would tell me my answer is incorrect. So then I would go back and give another answer. In this case, it's the use of uh, abuse of a Q-tip and resubmit. It now gives me a green and tells me that's the, that's the correct answer. And if I go back into the same quiz, standard quiz, you will see that Every time I re-enter, I get a different quiz. So there's over 250 questions, and they're randomized, so you, and, and the questions, the images uh, are, are all different, so you would never get the same quiz twice. We also have anatomical quizzes. So in the anatomical quizzes, um, we have landmarks on a normal ear, Etc. And then we have pathological features on 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 uh, abnormal ears. So if you look at landmarks on a normal ear, and for this particular question, it asks you locate the short process of the malleus. So now you see the targeting mechanism. So I would move the capacitance screen or the targeting mechanism while viewing the image to what I want where I want to put it. And if I put it in the wrong spot and submit. I get a red telling me that's the wrong answer. So I could move it, short process of the malleus or lateral process of the malleus to the correct position, resubmit, and now it shows me that my answer is green, which is the correct answer. So I go through, uh, again, a training, a uh, verifiable uh, learning process as a, as, a, as a student in order to improve my skills. So th that's the uh, anatomical quizzes or pathological ears as well. So we have normal and pathological. So now you have to identify uh, anatomical structures within pathological ears. So those are the quizzes. Exams, if the exams are, are, if there's an exam to be taken by the student, it would be listed here. So in this case, there is an exam that's been created by the instructor. It's called untitled. So in this case, I'm gonna take the untitled uh, exam and it's asked me locate and point to the Vibrisi. So there's the Vibrisi. I submit the answer, and I've submitted the answer, and I have 45 seconds to give that answer. So I've used 12 seconds of it. I can change my answer as many times as I want during that time period, but once, if I press there, I can submit again. If I press there and submit again, I can submit as many times as long as I have time left. But once the time right runs out, here you'll see what's happened, because we only put one question on this particular exam that was created by the instructor. You'll see what happens when your time runs out on the exams. Okay, so now the quiz is completed, or the exam has been completed, and your time is exhausted, I'm locked out. And if I go back, the defined exam has now disappeared. So I, I can only take the exam once, I've completed it, and it disappears from my list. But the but by in the portal side for the instructor, they would have the results of that uh, particular exam that I just took. We'll now discuss the settings page. If I go back home and then use the settings screen, I can see that we have a clear visited modules button and a clear all bookmarks button. So uh, if I clear all the bookmarks, do I want to clear all the bookmarks? Yes. I'm done that. If I go home, you'll now see that I have no bookmarks. So I've cleaned all my bookmarks out. If I go back to the settings page, okay, let's go through these now. So we have different languages. We have a standard font. We have the sound on or off. We have a female or male voice selection. We have the cursor mode, which you can select from a full screen or a small cursor or an arrow. You could turn the auto advanced uh, functionality of the program off. You can hide the, the, uh, the startup, the welcome screen at startup. You can clear all your visited modules. 
clear your bookmarks, and you can change your password from here. And that's and then you can log out. So that completes the uh, the quick tour of the uh, of the Autosim uh, mobile for your phone.